All right, champions, we're going to knock this thing over today. Not literally. It's Australian slang for finish something. All right, so I've forgotten if I've checked the fuses on this one because it was a while back, so we'll check that. Looks intact. T1A. That's good. Check for continuity. It's good. So we're looking for a T2A on this one. And that it is continuity good so we've double checked we've re-hooked everything up and checked all the connections twice I'll give it about 10% of the mains and we'll check that all the voltages are where they should be all right so we've got no valves in there at the moment we're just checking voltages I'll flick that over to AC we're turned on we'll turn both the powers on and standby see what we've got so 4.4 volts AC Take that up to 24, that's what I like to do. 246, that's about what we have in the mains. But 10% of that. Alrighty, so we'll flick that back. Well, we'll stay on AC for a minute, check the heaters. About, about what we'd expect, 370, 370 millivolts. So 10 times that, 3.7, but it's unloaded. So when there's valves in there, it'll be lower. Uh, all right, over to DC with the transformer 51. So about yeah, about 500 volts unloaded. Sounds good. So we'll go through and check that we've got bias supply 3.7. So we'll do what we always do and take that as far negative as we can for testing. So we'll try out all the uh, JJs that it was presented with, and hopefully they're all sweet. AJ's my preferred 12x7 at the moment. But like all valve manufacturers, that could change next week. All you need is a bad batch to get a bad taste in your mouth. And obviously we're not using the KT77s because they're cooked. So they can uh, hang from the Christmas tree next Christmas as uh, rock and roll ornaments. I, I wanted to make a string of them with the heaters lit up, just hanging from the, the window or something. But then I did the calculations as to just how much power that would dissipate. <laughs> I decided against it. <laughs> Good way to start a fire. All right. We've got some unobtainium <laughs> valves. <laughs> Match quite a EL34s. I stocked up a bit before, uh, before the run happened on them. The old toilet paper syndrome. People that have no business hoarding valves. Hoarding valves because they're not a service centre. They're just some dickhead in their garage that wants to gouge and capitalise at the expense of everyone else. So a new JJ's, it's going to have a full new set of JJ's all around. Get rid of that paper dust. There's someone, someone was saying, oh, you can't touch the glass on valves, you'll make it break. It's a halogen, you dickhead. Have you seen how hot halogens get? Like, these, these, you can still touch them when they're running, like, it's different, okay? Well, no problems with the tension of those sockets. Mmm, ASMR. Mmm. Valvey. Don't drop them. I think I mentioned a while back um, in the old garage, the concrete floor. I was <laughs> revalving a, uh, I think it was a Fender basement 300. So what six KT88s or 6550s? I forget which. Um, yeah, they rolled onto the floor. Smash! I think I caught three out of the six before they fell was not happy that day so when you sit them on the bench sit them that way not that way because they can roll off all right so now they're standing up above the transformers so I'll uh, get some blocks and stick under it so they don't bash into the bench so here's my wooden blocks recycled hardwood I make furniture at home out of this stuff so I was explaining to someone the other day about Australian hardwoods, how friggin' hard and dense they are. So this is almost two kilos, just this block. And um, 
that's considered sort of a middle density timber here in Australia. You can see uh, the grain there and um, super hard and some of the timbers like Jarrah they actually bring silica up from the ground so when you cut them with just high speed steel tools like planers like you can't hand plane this stuff just forget it you just don't even try um, you need tungsten carbide cutters for this and you can sort of make out the machining patterns there from my planer thicknesser at home with the helix head carbide insert teeth individual teeth another good reason for individual teeth is when you're doing recycled hardwood you try and pull all the nails out but often you miss one or there's one breaks off um, below the surface and you don't notice so when you're machining it it's better to take out one of those teeth and be able to either turn it around if it's not shattered or because it's got four cutting edges or replace the thing entirely if it does shatter um, when you've got a big plane of thickness of 300 mil long a high speed steel blade and it takes a big nick out of it where well, you've got to grind that whole blade down to the bottom of that nick and then resharpen it which could be like a millimeter it takes forever so a big advantage with carbide bits is you can just replace them and there's no adjustment needed no um, calibration you just screw in the new one and off you go mate so yeah when I upgraded to that um, yeah it was a big improvement in the finish and because it's helix head it sort of slices at the timber it doesn't just punch at it so curly grain and stuff um machines up a lot nicer and there's less sanding required anyway how do we get talking about woodworking that's because i know i've got a big weekend of uh woodworking at the home week home workshop upcoming i don't know do you guys want to see woodworking stuff as well i tend to focus a lot on uh, the electronic stuff just because it's easy to film because everything's in the one spot it's easy to show results um, we can show stuff up close when you're doing the woodworking stuff you're sort of moving around a lot and maneuvering stuff around and changing the camera angle and it's just a bit of a pain in the ass so that's why I've had a pretty big bias on electronics here whereas in reality Brad's guitar garage is about 50 50 guitar and woodworking stuff and then electronics so I don't know, let me know if you want to see more of that. It might turn some people off. It might bring some new people in, whatever. Dems to brakes. All right, so once again, we're checking our resistance to the primaries of the uh, output transformer, one on this side, one on that side. 16.4 and 17 ohms. All right, champions, it's go time. Bring it up on the Variac. Drawing six watts, seven watts, eight watts. Let's have a look at the AC voltage while we're going. 46 volts, 13, 15, we're up to uh, 100 volts, 25 watts, so that's all looking good, we'll hear the relays click in a second, and there they go, and we're starting to get conduction on the outputs, and we'll start to hear, hear the test tone, and there it bloody is. Oh, crackling. Current's not jumping, so I'm not too panicked about the crackling. It could be a relay. Oh. I think it's that clean, clean crunch switch. Yeah, hasn't really cleaned up all that well, despite it being a clean switch so I'll give that another few cleaning cycles uh, if that doesn't work we'll have to look for a new switch I'll see if I've got one floating around on that other board I've got up there it's the long type uh, I'll zoom in in a minute there yeah, multiple uh, poles but anyway uh, 85 watts when we're sitting at 182 volts AC, so I'm confident to give that the full mains Morse code. What did that What did that say? I'm sure there's some radio nerd out there that says that's gobbledygook. <laughs> I don't know Morse code. Sorry. All 
We'll give that a blast with compressed air too, see if that helps. I think that's come good. Now the uh, the switch for the channels actually triggers a relay. It doesn't have any audio going through it. So you probably wouldn't even know if that was dirty. It seems to be reacting as expected. So that's all looking good. Oh, Jesus, I almost fell over and cracked my head open. Uh, <laughs> so let's give it the full mains again and we'll bias it up and then put it under test for a while. And if that passes with flying colors, we'll give it a sound test. We'll play some guitar through it and see how she goes. All right, so we've given the bias a bit of a tweak. We're still on the Variac. Uh, we're just checking that we can balance these more or less uh, before we go giving it the full mains. Otherwise one will go way out and things could happen. We don't want things to happen, do we? We want stuff to happen. So before we take the Variac off, let's just give it exactly 240 volts. We'll see where it sits there. Let's check the ripple. 1.4 volts ripple is bugger all, but we're biased very cold. All right, champions, I've got my beauty light engaged. Am I beautiful? <laughs> Here's the setup. We've got a Marshall. It's got a bit of a hum from the power transformer. Not brilliant, but it's drawing reasonable current. Short of replacing the transformer, which may or may not fix the problem. Not much we can do about that, but um, it's like in standby. It's um, it's like an audible hum from the chassis. It's not from the speaker. So anyway, we'll uh, fire it up. We'll have a go. Got the old strat here. Old faithful. And we'll uh, see how she sounds with the close mic. Oh, and we've got the, uh, the little Motu bugger down there. Giving it its uh, baptism by fire with a 100 watt marshal going into it. <laughs> Poor little bugger doesn't know what it's in for. So let's have a listen. All right, so we've got everything at 12 o'clock, all the switches out. Uh, crunch mode. Bring the volume down a touch and we'll uh, see how much gain it's got in crunch mode. Move to Ultra Gain channel. So that's the tone there that they're feeding into the uh, overdrive stage. So that, that is the tone shaping that this amp is seeing before overdriving. All the bottom end gone. And of course, that's the only way you can make a non flabby sort of distortion. And when you distort it, the subharmonics come back in later anyway, so. Go 
going with a lead two switch. <laughs> So that's about all the useful gain on tap. Um, the EQ is post distortion, so. So you can get a pretty usable JCM 800-ish sound with everything pretty much 12 o'clock. Uh, tone shift out, gain about 12 o'clock gives you, on the lead one, gives you about uh, the most amount of gain that an 800 has. Uh, and the deep switch in, which brings back some of that bottom end that makes this thing real boxy without it. <laughs> that feels like pretty close to an 800, it's not quite there, but it's about as close as this thing gets. Maybe a bit more presence for a bit more of the top end bite, but this doesn't really simulate the bright cap or anything, because it's um, the brightness of a 2203, because it's EQ after the distortion, and it's different distortion stages too. back to the clean channel and we'll just try out the reverb. Clean channel sounds real nasal with the deep switch in. It just sounds a bit unnatural. Ideally, you'd have the deep switch on the overdrive of the ultra gain and then no deep switch on the classic gain and that would sound a bit more usable, I think. Crank that up, see what the character of the reverb is. We'll try the reverb on the overdrive channel, although I think it's a waste of time. Heard something a bit weird there, like intermodulation of some description, like maybe the reverb returns overdriving. Like, what are you going to use that for, honestly? <laughs> Alright, one last riff to see if Scotty's watching.
on the hard drugs. Right, so this one is good to go. Uh, see you on the next one, champions. Share it around, give it a like, give it a likey, and uh, a subscribey, and you know, I'll probably make more videos for you. See you around.